Tonight I will read to you Sunyata, Lion King of Mali, written and illustrated beautifully by David Wisniewski. I chose this story because this last week, this last couple of weeks, have been very hectic politically in Puerto Rico. I've been consumed by the news and everything that's going on. I was looking for a story that would help me understand, that would help me navigate through everything that I was feeling and that the people in Puerto Rico and outside of Puerto Rico, everybody is feeling right now. And I saw while navigating all that, I saw this little figurine that my uncle brought back from West Africa when he used to work there. And I said, ah, of course, Sunjata. Sunjata is a true tale of politics and intrigue, fate, destiny. And I said, ah, this is it. And to top it all off, Many Puerto Ricans are descendants of West Africans, so this is also our history. I leave you with Sundata Lion King of Mali, as told by Griots. And Griots, as you will learn in the story, are the people who are the guardians of history. Before books existed, Griots will memorize the history of the land and would tell it to kings and to the people of the kingdoms. Here it goes. Listen to me, children of the bright country, and hear the great deeds of ages past. The words I speak are those of my father and his father before him, pure and full of truth. For we are griots. Centuries of law and learning reside within our minds. Thus we serve kings with the wisdom of history, bringing to life the lessons of the past so that the future may flourish. Listen then to the story of Sunjata, the Lion King, who overcame all things to walk with greatness. As the lion rules the savannah with power and grace, so did Magan Konfata rule Mali. One day, two hunters approached his throne. Between them walked a maiden, hunchbacked and ill-favored. King Magan caught his breath, for such a visit had been foretold. Great king, said the hunters, we come from the land of Do, where terrible buffalo ravished the countryside. We slew it, and in gratitude the king of Do bade us bring this damsel to you. Her name is Sogolonketu. Though homely, she is said to possess the very spirit of that buffalo, strong and courageous. Of such spirits, great kings are born, whispered Magan's griot. The son of lion and buffalo will be mighty indeed. So advised, the king wed Sogolon and grew to love her. The next year, Sogolon gave birth to a boy. All rejoiced except Tasuma Berete, the first wife of the king. Magan already has my fine son as his heir, she muttered bitterly. What need has he of another, especially from this hideous woman? But the new prince, Sunyata, though blessed by the spirits of buffalo and lion, proved unable to speak or walk. At this, Sasuma Berete rejoiced. For seven years, Sokolon tried in vain to heal her son with potions and herbs. Sunjata dragged himself through the palace, ignored by some, ridiculed by others. His mother was heartbroken, and his father despaired. Hmm. How small the seed from which a great tree springs, 
counseled the king's griot. And what storms the first sprout endures. Sunjata will grow in his own time, not yours, great king. The next day, Magan ordered her son brought before him. My time grows short, Sunjata, he said. So now I must present the gift that each king gives his heir. A young man stepped forward. This is Balafaseke, the king continued. As his father has been my griot, so will he be yours. From his, from him you will learn the history of your ancestors and the laws of this life. May your destiny be fulfilled, my son. Sundiata sat up slowly, motioned Balafaseke to his side and spoke his first words. Bala, you are my griot. Magus' doubts disappeared, and he prepared Sunjata to rule. But while Magan Konfata died, the council of elders paid no attention to his wishes. Instead, they allowed the son of Sasuma Barite to ascend the throne. Filled with pride, Sasuma lost no time in taunting Sunjata's mother. Huh. It would seem that a walking boy is better than a crawling lion. Seeing Sogolon's tears, Sunjata summoned Balafaseke. Go to the master smith, he ordered, and fetch me an iron rod. When Bala returned, Sunjata seized the rod with both hands, thrust it into the ground, and raised himself to his knees. Then with a mighty effort, he pulled himself to his feet. The iron rod fell away, bent with strain, and Sunjata stood alone. A crowd gathered in amazement as Sunjata took a step, then another, and another. Make way, make way, cried Bala Faseke. The lion is walking. When Sasuma Berete heard of Sunjata's new strength, she feared he would challenge her son for the throne. Late one night, she called the nine great witches of Mali to her bedside. You must use your powers to kill Sunjata, she commanded. Our magic is useless without his anger, said the witches. Go to his mother's garden and pick her spices, hissed Sasuma. That will surely make him angry enough. But when Sunjata found the witches in his mother's garden, he greeted them courteously and helped them gather the spices. Alas, queen, the witches reported, our magic cannot hurt a heart full of kindness. You can do nothing against them. So Sasuma Berete bided her time. When Sunjata was 10 years old, she had Balafaseke sent away to the court of Soso. This evil land was ruled by Sumanguru, a sorcerer king, whose huge armies and powerful magic were greatly feared. Impressed by the young Griot's skill, Sumanguru resolved to keep him in Soso forever. Sunjata was angered and saddened by the loss of his friend, and Sogolon's wise words brought new pain. We must leave Mali, she said, before our kin fall victim to the queen's hatred. When you are a man, you will return and set all things right. Sunjata reluctantly agreed. That evening, Sogolon and her children left all that they knew and loved. For seven years, the family traveled the harsh road of exile, 
journeying through forest and plain, from kingdom to kingdom. Rulers, fearful of the queen's displeasure, denied them shelter, and some gates were closed against them. Yet Sunjata grew in mind and spirit, even as his body grew in stature and strength. In all these trials, Sunjata never forgot Balafaseke. At every court and caravan, he heard of the growing power of Sumanguru and of the unhappy lands under his control. The family ended their travels in the city of Mema. Worried and ill, Sogolon rested by the banks of the Niger. Sunjata found favor with the king of Mema, who took him on campaigns against the mountain tribes that troubled his kingdom. Observing Sunjata's courage and leadership, he decided to make the young prince his heir. He thought he taught Sunjata the ways of war and government and looked upon him as a son. One day, frantic messengers pleaded to speak with Sunjata. Son of lion and buffalo, they implored. Return to your homeland. Whatever honors you hold in Mema, leave them and deliver your land from fire and sword. What has happened? asked Sunjata. Sumanguru has invaded Mali, they said. The king and his mother have fled. Our people have taken to the bush to fight, but they are leaderless. We have consulted the seers, and they said that only you can save Mali. The throne of your father awaits you. The moment has come, my son, whispered Sogolon. Your destiny is about to be fulfilled. Sunjata lost no time. The king of Mela gave him half his army, rank upon rank of armored horsemen carrying great iron spears. Riding at the head of his column, Sunjata stopped at every kingdom that had aided him during his long exile and gathered more troops. Soon, a mighty host covered the savannah, and the thunder of hooves could be heard many miles away. The two armies clashed on the plain of Kirina. All day they battled, the battle raged. Astride his gray charger, Sunjata galloped through the fray, searching for Sumanguru. Suddenly, Balafaseke was at Sunjata's side. The two friends embraced. I escaped from the palace and followed Sumanguru's army, hoping to find you, said Bala. For these seven years, I have pretended allegiance to the sorcerer, and I have managed to discover his weakness. He pulled a wooden arrow from his robe. It was tipped with the spur of a white rooster. This is the Tana of Sumanguru, Bala continued. The charm he believes will erase his power. The slightest touch will defeat him utterly. Sunjata took the arrow and spurred his horse back into battle. He made his way through the dust and confusion to the hill where the sorcerer stood. Notching the arrow, he drew his mighty bow and let it fly. The arrow flew straight and true, cutting through Sumanguru's cape and gazing his shoulder. At the sight of the Tana, the sorcerer let out a harsh cry and galloped from the field. Pursued by Sunjata and Balafaseke, Sumanguru fled to the slopes of Mount Kulikoro and staggered into a dark cave. Powers of night, he cried, do not let me fall into the hands of Sunjata. It is said that Sumanguru then became one with the stone of the cave, for he was never seen again. Disheartened by his flight, the sorcerer's army went down to defeat. Sunjata returned in glory to Mali. Crowds lined the road the entire journey, shouting his praise. The twelve kings who had aided him in exile and in battle waited at his throne, swearing allegiance forever. 
Sunjata spoke softly, and Balafaseke conveyed his words to the multitude. Hatred draws me from this land, he said, because of what I seemed to be, a crawling child, unworthy of respect and unfit to rule. Mali has suffered great hardship as a result. Now I return as your king. Henceforth, none shall interfere with another's destiny. You, your children, and your children's children shall find their appointed place within this land forever. This came to pass, and Sunjata, the Lion King, ruled the, brighty, the bright country for many golden years. I hope you enjoyed it, and that it brings you some hope. I love the parts in which fate and destiny and everything is written, and I know that's kind of I don't know, at, at times it's a little bit disturbing, but in this story, it just, it just made, it just felt right. <laughs> uh, so this is Sunjata, the Lion King of Mali. <laughs>